When I first started it, when I first started it, the reason for starting it was I wanted to create a platform where ordinary football supporters of Arsenal Football Club could come on and have their say. I don't care what you look like, what colour you are, what race you are, religion. There's only one religion when we're following and when we're following our club and that's Arsenal. Come on, Arsenal! Back again! Oi! Yeah! About to jump on board a flight to LA in Sydney, Australia. The sun's at. We're on our way to Russia. We roll it out, baby. California. The sun's at. We're on our way to Russia. We roll it out, baby. California. <laughs> Hollywood. By the club. There's no passion club. I'm telling you, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. China, Shanghai. Uh, this is Barcelona. I only came to see the Pepe. I'm not interested in a Messi. Blood clot, yeah, what a finish. I uh, got to meet Thierry Henry. Repaint it again. Yeah, like Lacazette, Lacazette, come on, change the game. <laughs> We've been fantastic today. You're going over the top again. What, you said it goes to win the league. It's not Ski Sunday. It was, uh, what's all this about? <laughs> yes. I'm a black guy, yeah! Black guy, yeah! This is AFTV. We are live on YouTube. We're here in the um, YouTube space. Welcome along to the AFTV 1 million subscribers celebration party. 1 million subscribers! Wow. Amazing. You know what? I remember when we did our first video, Tao sat there in the front row. When we done our first video, we got 100 views. We were high-fiving each other. Yes! A hundred views. Absolutely amazing. One million subscribers. Um, the idea began about six years ago as an Arsenal supporter of over 30 years. Um, I wanted to create a platform that would give ordinary fans of Arsenal Football Club a voice. You know, give them a chance to have their say on a club that they love. We turned up at Arsenal one day with a borrowed camera, borrowed mic and started interviewing fans. I remember the game, it was Arsenal versus Tottenham. Anybody know what the score was? 5-2 to Arsenal, the good old days. <laughs> right. Right. Um, and it was brilliant. And from straight away, we got a great reaction from the fans. And, you know, it's just been an incredible, incredible journey on AFTV. Um, a journey that's taken us the length and breadth of you know, this country watching Arsenal, to whether it be Liverpool, Man United, Burnley, it's been amazing. It's taken us all around Europe, especially last year, lots of Eastern Europe <laughs> in the Europa League. It's taken us to so many different countries, Australia, Russia, the USA, Azerbaijan last year. You know, it's, we, we've been everywhere. It's been an absolutely amazing journey. And along the way, you know, we've met so many different people, had so many great things happen to us, and it's been an incredible journey. And what we want to do tonight is celebrate that journey, celebrate the journey with uh, you guys that are here tonight at YouTube, and also to everybody who's watching around the world, because you guys have really contributed to making AFTV what it is today, something that's really unique. When we started it, Nobody had really done it in this way before, where we gave the fans a chance to have their say. And I think people now realise that fans are the most important people in football. You agree with me? <laughs> so, we're going to celebrate this tonight. And, uh, you know, it's not about celebrating on our own, it's about celebrating with all you guys that have made this happen. 
Um, so I hope you enjoy the night. To everybody who's watching out there on YouTube, I hope you uh, enjoy it as well. And uh, let's have some fun tonight. So first of all, to grace the night, I'm going to bring onto stage somebody that I used to watch on the terraces at Highbury. I used to go there, I used to sing his name. I used to love him. He was a, he was a centre forward, old fashioned centre forward. Got stuck in, yeah, right? Really got stuck in with no nonsense and he scored a lot of goals. He had a great partnership with Ian Wright. He had a successful Arsenal career, went on to play for Everton, had a successful career for them as well. Has been a, um, excellent as a, a TV pundit and you know the most incredible thing? Now we have him doing shows for us here on AFTV. It's incredible. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Kevin Campbell. <laughs> Kevin, you know what? It's awesome to have you here tonight. Um, as I said, used to watch you playing and admire you and love you so much, right? And to now be sometimes working alongside you, it's just incredible for me. Robbie, I've got to say, I'm, I'm from the era where it was fanzine, where you used to read it. And to see what you guys have done with this channel, the platform, and to, to build some stars, because let's be honest, a lot of the guys who, and, and girls who work with you on this get recognised out on the street and, you know, they're building their own legacy. I think it's such a fantastic thing. I came from being a fan to luckily being a player and now I'm back being a fan and to, to join you guys on AFTV, I think it's, it's, it's the next step, really. It's harder being a fan, isn't it? Especially <laughs> after you see a game like Sunday. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> it's hard it being a fan. Hard be <laughs> Listen, it is hard being a fan. It is. But you know what? We all share one common goal and it's Arsenal. It's the love for Arsenal. We want Arsenal to be a lot better, don't we? Yeah. The thing is, we know what Arsenal is when they're good, and we know what Arsenal are like when they're bad. So, <laughs> you know, we just want it to, to turn around the other way. And, uh, Kev, you know, it's incredible that now you're on AFTV um, doing some shows as well um, with Lee Judges as well. Brilliant shows they are as well. And it's great that we get such an insight from you being an ex-player and fan. Well, I think that was, was going to be the natural progression for AFTV because, you know, after getting such great opinions from the fans, the next stage was, I think Wright has done some stuff with you yes, as well. Yes, he has. But to have somebody who's going to be a regular every fortnight to give an insight into what's going on and what they see, I think that's the next progression for AFTV. And it, for, for somebody like myself, as I say, I'm, I've been a fan. I've watched all the guys. I follow the guys uh, uh, and girls. I love it. Absolutely love it. And I think it's really important for fans to have a, have a voice. Because mm. whereas fans never really had a voice, now they haven't just got a voice. They've got, actually got a visual, a platform. And it's brilliant. Mm. Uh, and if you would have been still playing now, because some of these guys, they didn't give, you, they didn't give the players a bit of stick. right? Um, how would you been with that? Would you just have took it and said, well, listen, they're fans, they're having their opinions, or would you be like, oh, they shouldn't be saying stuff like that? How would you be? Um, uh, being from Brixton, I think, some of the... <laughs> <laughs> some of the comments... Uh, wait, it wouldn't just be me, I think my boys would have been on it, you know what I mean? But... So but I'd, have, I'd have some man rolling up on me. Not, <laughs> not necessarily you, Robbie, because I think what you do is you're quite cool with how you, you, you operate. But some of the guys are harsh, man. <laughs> some of the guys are harsh. But, you know, it is what it is. And opinion is what football is all about. We used to go in the pubs back in the day. When he went in the pub, he used to hear every opinion. One, one guy used to say he's good. Two guys used to say he's crap. Then a next guy used to come. I wouldn't get him. I'll get somebody else. So that's what the platform does. It's brilliant. Well, listen, it's an honour that we've got you on the platform. Thanks for your honest opinions that you've been giving us as well. And um, you're still, for me, super Kev. I mean, let's give it up for Kevin Campbell. Thank you, Robbie. Brilliant. The, you know, after all these years, as I said, the, when we start, 
that we can have, you know, somebody like Kevin Campbell, you know, coming up here and gracing the stage and also being part of AFTV is absolutely incredible. Um, there's been some people out there that have been sending us some congratulation messages. So um, we're going to go into some of those congratulation messages right now. Check this out. Yo, Arsenal Fan TV, congratulations on a million subscribers. Uh, I love you guys. You keep me up to date with all my Arsenal news. I watch you every day. Favourite YouTube channel. Uh, you have great guys. Want to shout out to, to Lee, to Turkish, to DT, and then Troops. I love you, man. Uh, Robbie, keep up the good work. And, uh, yeah. Come on, Arsenal! I just heard you hit one million subscribers. Just want to say well done. Keep going. Congratulations on a million subscribers. Uh, it's Reggie Yates here, and I just wanted to say on behalf of all of us Arsenal fans, uh, we love you. Uh, you represent us in the right way. We scream at our TVs every single week because of the team that we support, uh, whether we like it or not. And uh, you lot got us covered. You're our voice. You're authentic. You're real. And uh, long may it continue. Uh, big love. And yeah. Yeah, keep doing your thing. Who's telling me Uncle Robbie's not supporting other platforms? One million subscribers and you deserve it. Joe from Cheeky Sport, we're celebrating drinking water. Big shout out to AFTV for reaching a million subscribers. That's sick. Thank you for being the voice of the fans, the true voice of the fans. Everyone involved, Robbie, Troops, DT, too many names to mention. Big up everyone. Um, yeah, man, keep pushing. I'm going to say congratulations on your many subscribers and good luck, hope you can get a million more. Huge shout out to AFTV on the one million subscribers. That's big time. Keep on bringing us the energy, the good vibes, and the latest gossip on Arsenal, man. Come on, Gunners. Yo, AFTV, congrats on a million subscribers. Next stop, 5 mil, 10 mil, diamond button, yeah? Yo, what's going on? It's your boy Addy Bar Wrecking Film, where AKA the Beast, and this message is a shout out for AFTV. Even though I'm a Liverpool supporter, true and true, props recognizes props. Massive shout out to reaching a million subscribers. Listen, keep doing what you're doing, keep shining, keep growing, keep it beast mode. AFTV that's got 1 million subscribers. Well done, guys. Congratulations. Smashing it. Keep doing your thing. Um, supporting the best club in the world. And you know what it is. All love, take care, congratulations. Congratulations to our YouTube channel, million subscribers. Keep going. I want to bless up uh, Arsenal Fan TV for reaching a million subscribers. That's a big milestone. Let's just continue supporting the club that we love, the players that we like. And just hopefully we can go on to bigger and better things each season. God bless, man. Congrats on a million subs. Big up. Yes. Congratulations to Arsenal TV getting 1 million subs, that's a nice man, man, to be fair I'm one of them man. Congratulations to AFTV on getting a million subscribers. Congratulations from me and from Vooch. Absolute legends. Thank you for those kind messages. Well, I keep arguing with Akin Fenway now about he's a Liverpool fan. And he's from North London. I keep, well, sometimes I argue he's bigger than me, you know what I mean? And you've seen his muscles and I ain't going to play with him, but he should be an Arsenal supporter if you know where he lives. But no, thank you very much for those messages. And uh, to all the fans out there that have been sending in their messages, we, we hit uh, a million subscribers in the, um, earlier on in the summer. And um, we had so many messages from fans around the world. So really, really appreciate that. And from you guys as well here tonight, thank you very much. Now, you know on AFTV that... Over the years, we've interviewed thousands of fans, thousands. And we've had hundreds of viral videos. I mean, even on Monday Just Gone, we had the number one trending video on YouTube. That was an AFTV video after the Watford game. So, you know, we still continue to get the love from the fans. And we really, really love that. And we've interviewed some fans over the years that have gone on to become household names and real characters. And so well known because they have such strong and passionate opinions on their team. And what I'd like to do tonight is to bring up some of those fans on stage and uh, just have a little chat with them, you know? I mean, there's so many brilliant fans and it's been so hard to pick some out, but I just thought, let me pick some of the ones that they've just really been stand out and been coming on AFTV for years. Without, they don't get paid. They come on out of their love and passion for the club. So 
We're going to bring them up on stage now. So each one of them comes up, give them a big round of applause. And we're going to have a chat with them as well. You guys are going to get a chance to uh, ask them some questions as well. So the first person I'm going to bring up onto stage is Chris Hudson. Give it up. Who media lovies. Get off your ass and start saying the S it is. And a, a message to the board of a fucking shape up or get out. Because you've let all the fans down. You should be ashamed of yourself, Gazidis. Chris Hudson! <laughs> Come on, Chris, don't be shy, mate. <laughs> you weren't shy then. Have a seat there, Chris. Have a seat there. Right. Next person I'm going to bring up needs no introduction. I call him Marmite, right? You either love him or you hate him. This guy said to me the other day, he goes, oh, Robbie, I just hate Marmite. That's it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but you all know who he is. Always comes on, always has strong opinions. Really knowledgeable about the club. Loves the club. Has been following Arsenal since he was a little baby. Ladies and gentlemen, put it together for DT. Oxlade Chamberlain wants 180 grand a week and he's turning it down. You can't even cross a ball. <laughs> Come on. When is it going to end, Robbie? I've had enough of it. Ivan Gazidis, you fucking liar. <laughs> Give it up for DT. <laughs> Always love DT. I love him. This next guy I'm going to bring up as well. Again, another guy. Got great opinions, right? Again, so, what I love about all these guys, they're so passionate and they really, really know their football. And this guy's no exception. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Lee Judges. Well, that one's still in the 19th when they what think they're all big again, like, you know yeah. what I mean? But they do not learn, do they? Last season, they thought they would come down here and steamroll us. They thought they'd come around and steamroll us again this season. And, and, and they're delusional, like, you know? They get on my nerves. And thank you, Arsenal, for today, for, for making me very, very happy. Give for Lee Judges a geezer. Right, this next guy, again, another guy needs no introduction. I remember the first time I interviewed him, I was like, this guy's crazy, man. Right? He came up with the phrase, Obama, blood clot, young, <laughs> amongst many other phrases. You know who he is. Let's hear it for troops. About my who? About my what? Blood About my blood clot, yeah. yeah? My fucking brother. I told you little inbred pricks, yeah? When you come here, blood, you're holding corn root boy, yeah? Expressions, walk one, bro. Let's hear it for troops! The next person I'm bringing up. Nigeria's finest. <laughs> Represents his culture to the full, right? Yeah, the leader of Iwobi's fan club for many years. Still crying since Alex Iwobi's left, but listen, we love him. Let's hear it for Kalechi! All my guys are ballers. All my guys are ballers. All my guys are ballers. <laughs> my brother, all my guys are ballers, you understand? My brother, we are just balling today, you understand? In fact, I'm so, so happy. Kalechi, ladies and gentlemen. And listen, last but not least, who I'm going to bring to the stage right now. Again, they need no introduction. Now, remember, the first time I met these guys, was actually the second game we ever filmed on AFTV. It was an away game. We were playing Aston Villa away, and we went on the coach. And the coach driver goes to me, he goes, yeah, I see you know, so doing that filming thing. If you want to interview somebody, there's two guys at the back. All they do is they bloody argue. They argue all the way up to the game, and they argue all the way back. Please, go and interview them and do something with them, man. Tell them to shut up, right? Claude and Ty!
We gave away a bad goal. There's nothing you can do about a free kick. You can't keep making stupid excuses. And this is the problem with this club. It's people like you. Who's people like me? No, people like you won't accept it. You won't accept it. people like me? No, you. Who are people like me? And who am I? Tell me who I am then. Because you won't accept it. Are you more committed than me? 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 Come on the time, ladies and gentlemen. recognise these two. Who are these two? <laughs> Ty, I don't recognise you without your headphones or that, man. Listen, we're gonna, I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna go around and ask these guys some questions also, and then I'm gonna get it out to the crowd. You guys can ask some questions also to um, these guys. I'm gonna start off with you, Chris. Chris, the video that you did on AFTV, I always say to people, every time I get interviewed, and people say, Robbie, was there a sort of a turning point on AFTV? I always point to your video and say, you know what? That video with Chris Hudson, because that day, I remember it was the first game of the season. We played Aston Villa. Um, we lost the game. And it had just followed on from a really bad summer where we hadn't really signed any players. And I felt that on that day, your interview sort of encapsulated how every... Arsenal fan was feeling on that day. And it was the first time that a fan had been so outspoken on it and it got shared everywhere. I remember waking up the next morning, the Daily Mirror, the, all these papers, they were getting in contact with me. Could we use your video? Could we use your video? I was like, hey? And that's when I realised that we were really onto something. This is going to be big. But do you remember that interview, Chris? Yeah, of course I do, Rob. <laughs> and uh, it's, people think, oh... It, that that day, that was pure passion you saw that day, Robbie. Yeah. It, was just, it was the culmination of, say, three or four years of total mismanagement. And I, I just lost it, and I'm glad I did. But I unfortunately, forward six years, I noticed we're playing Aston Villa Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you something now, if he goes tits up, <laughs> interview me again. I don't know if you remember, right? I don't know if you remember this, Chris, yeah? But on that day, you came up to me and we were sort of just like setting up and you said, you was just having a go at me, right? You was, saying, you was shouting, he's pointing and I was saying, hold on, mate, we're going to interview, we'll interview. And you said, you won't put this out. Remember that? Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't believe it, Rob. And then it went all over, people were reckoning, uh, what was a bit uncomfortable for me was the following weeks, people were coming out asking me for my autograph and things like that. <laughs> I said, leave it out. I, I just did it out of passion. Yeah. Nothing else. DT, um, I think this guy has had more... <laughs> <laughs> oh, look who's over there. <laughs> ah. Don't worry, a, it, we'll see you on the 4th of November. <laughs> this guy... <laughs> this guy, I think... <laughs> has had more, more viral videos than anybody else. So he, you know, even people were telling me, I was chatting to a guy the other day, he said, Robbie, in, in China, he is huge. I go, China? They go, yeah, they, they just can't understand how comes he's always so angry. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> but DT, I know that you're a, you're, you're a guy, you're passionate about Arsenal. There were the years when Arsene Wenger was here where you were really vocal really, really vocal about Arsene Wenger. Um, let's explain, talk, talk to me about that, because I know that you started off being a massive fan of Arsene Wenger. I think everyone was a fan of Arsene Wenger. Um, he was like the father figure to everybody. And if you would have told me after we beat Leicester in the final game to become invincible, that 10 years forward on from there, I'd be waving around banners and wanting him out and all sorts. I would have just laughed at you. But it come to a point where I felt that the club were not listening to the fans. They weren't listening to our opinions and what we were talking about. So I was like, you know what? I'm bringing the banner out. And it was Holloway. Um, and I remember it as clear as day, like it was yesterday. And I said, I don't care what the result is. I'm bringing it out. 
And I remember about 10 miles from Hull, I pulled over into a service station um, and I had to get into the disabled toilet um, to wrap it underneath all my clothing. And I had my son Kieran with me and I had to walk to the toilets with a limp and then pretend to get into the disabled toilet, got in there, helped wrap it all round, got to the ground. And the guy patted me down and he was like, Are you cold? It's like freezing up north, mate. And then obviously got to the end. A few people knew what my plan was. We decided on an area that we were going to go and deal with it. Pulled the banner out, lifted it up. And then about half an hour later, my phone was going mad. And lo and behold, Ian Wright had um, tweeted about it and called it a muggy banner. <laughs> so, and yeah, I tweeted him and called him a prick. And, um, and, but listen, we, um, we're both very passionate. And um, he got my point of view and I got his point of view and it kind of just escalated from there and then... Do, do you think over the years that you, you know, as I said, you're very outspoken. Did you go over the top about Arsene Wenger? No, do you know what? The thing is, I felt that if the club would have listened to us from the beginning, it would never have got to the extent it got to. I felt that there were a lot of fans that were too scared to open their mouth because they felt a sense of loyalty towards Wenger, people like Ty. Um, but, <laughs> oh. but, that, but that doesn't mean that he's any less of a fan. You know, he's, different opinion. It's just difference of opinion, and that's what AFTV is all about. And um, I felt I, had, I did what was necessary. And eventually, not just because of banners and me and troops and everyone else, but as a whole, the club started to listen. Mm. And we're in a situation right now where the club might have to start listening again. <laughs> now, Lee, you, you, you've, been, um, you've been an Arsenal fan for a very long time. What, what's it been like uh, being on AFTV? Because it's a lot different, isn't it, to back in the day where Kevin Campbell came up and said, basically, in those days, it was more fancy day. Where Kevin Campbell came up and said, basically, in those days, it was more fanzines. Now with AFTV, it's more in your face. People see it more. It gets shared more. I mean, people must recognise you a lot. I mean, what, as, how's it changed for you? I love it. <laughs> 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 no, no, honestly, look, it has changed. And, and, and the, th the thing is with, with AFTV and all these sort of things, football's changed. Football's changed completely from when I started first going. You know, you could walk into the turnstiles. I think it was a fiver to get in. I once got kicked out of uh, out of the North Bank one time, and you could walk around and go back in. It cost me a tenner, <laughs> but like, um, but that's how it was. Yeah. You know, nowadays it's all tickets, and um, it's completely changed. And the passion, passion, but the passion never changes, Robbie. Mm. You know, once you're an Arsenal fan, that you're an Arsenal fan. I love the club. Absolutely love everything about it, the, the people, the supporters and everything like that. And through ATV, Arsenal Fan TV and everything like that, I've, I've got met loads of people, different people, you know, people that, you know, I can now call friends and things like that. So it's been a great thing for me. Did you ever think back in the day of going to Arsenal, watching Arsenal week in, week out of hybrid, that you'd then be doing a show with Kevin Campbell? <laughs> <laughs> No, I didn't, uh, you know, I, I was talking about this today, you know, like the FA Cup final in 93. I, funny enough, I was stuck in, um, after the game was on a Thursday night, five o'clock in the morning, we couldn't get home and we had to get the night bus. And, you know, you're thinking like older players and, and I'm thinking like, you know, like 20, 30 years later, I say 20, <laughs> 30 years later, that, you know, I'd, I'd be having a drink with Kevin today. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's surreal, you know, and to meet players that I have done, you know, through all of this, to be able to, you know, call Kevin a friend and uh, meet people like Nigel Winterburn and, and be on the stage with, with players that I looked up to as a, you know, younger. You know, I look, I look at. I was talking to Kevin earlier on about this. I, for, for an older fan now, I, I look at the players a lot differently because I'm a lot older than they. They're, they're boys to me. Mm. But when I was growing, coming up as through the 90s and the 80s and all that, they were my age or they was a little bit older. So you sort of looked up to them, so it's all sort of different. But to meet those guys now through 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 you, Robbie, and all of this, you know, is a dream come true for an Arsenal fan. And um, when people say, oh, why'd you go on it and things like that, well, it's given me so much, given me so much things like, from, from the love of Arsenal, to be able to meet guys like Kevin, Ian Wright, and um, Nigel Winterburn, all those players, Paul Merson, 
players that I looked up to as a kid, you know, and Alan Smith and all those guys, not as a kid, I was a bit older then, <laughs> but um, all those guys that I looked up to, to be able to talk to them, you know, to go to Germany in Munich, oh, we lost 5-1, but that was a bad thing, but the highlight of it was uh, one of my mates, Tony, turned around and said, oh, look, there's Ray Parler over there, let's go and have a photo. So as I went up to have a phone, he went, oh, hello, Lee, how are you? You're right. It's, 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 it's surreal. It's amazing, it's amazing. Troops. Yo. Oh, you got oh, he's got a mic. Oh, he's working, yeah. <laughs> Special. Troops, you, you, you're really a sort of um, a unique, you become a unique fan because I remember like when you first came on, there were a lot of people saying, the way this guy talks, fan, blood, blood, fan, right? They, were, they, they, was, you know, they never really heard a fan like you before, even though there's loads of fans like you in London that follow Arsenal, but they'd never really heard from fans like you before. And now you've become a household name as just by being a fan. You're, you're in the latest FIFA game, is that right? Yes, mad fan. The latest FIFA game is a voice in that. The, the Adidas Arsenal ad that seem to copy the way you talk. I mean, you know, you, it's really, really been a massive rise for you, isn't it? I mean, tell us about your journey on AFTV. Like, for me, like, it's just it's changed my life, blood. You understand? Because man used to work and whatnot, but I was around my circle from a kid, innit? And my circle's mad, you understand? They're not, they're, they're loyal, you get me? You, I'd, I love them to the death of me. I'd, Never stop talking to them, but I can't really roll with them every day because they're going down one road, I'm trying to go down another road, you get me? And AFTV kind of got me off that road, you get me? And for me, it's just, it's mad, like, even, like, you're saying the FIFA thing, like, I remember, like, when it when it come out, like, obviously, I, I've, I've had to hold it down for a while, but then when I've let it out now, and then my girl was, like, she put out, like, her little thing, in it on her on her socials, and she was, like, from the days of, like, chilling with the man, them 10 men up in the room, and she's just lying in the corner on the bed, pissed off. And we're banging out in the room. And she's just lying in the corner on the bed, pissed off. And we're banging out FIFA till five in the morning. And then she's like, to you actually on the game now. Like, it's mad, you understand? Like. It's been amazing. And um, also you've done a lot of traveling with, uh, with AFTV. Yeah, fam. The places I've been, yeah, like the World Cup blood, you understand? Like in Russia. That yeah, was brilliant. Fam. Like I remember the first time we went to CSKA and I was telling you, like, yo, I'm not on this, bro. Like, <laughs> man's black, you understand? <laughs> like, I know in it, like, I'd I'd rather go to I I'd, I'd rather walk down, I'd i I'd rather go Tivoli Gardens. You understand? <laughs> or Spanish town. You get me? If you know, you know. Or or H Harlesden High Street. Go to the Norm, Hackney, then go Russia. You understand? Because Nah, blood, like, and you with your, nah, come, man, it'll be cool, man, it'll be cool, man. You get me? Towel, yeah, come, man, come, man, come, man, come, man. Man did it. And when we went there, and people are recognising us, you understand? Not even just English fans, Tunisian fans. I remember when we got to, um, when we thought we was on our way there, and we stopped off at Rock, we stopped off in Moscow, and the guy from Peru, and he had the red, yeah, remember? Yeah, yeah. And he was like, yeah, you guys are the Arsenal guys. I'm like, Ross, <laughs> this brother's in Peru, fam, you understand? Like, <laughs> what is going on, blood? Like, when we went to Singapore, and man came out of the ground, and we all got split up, blood, because you had a crowd around you, DT had a crowd around him, I had a crowd around me. He had to come and get me, because they were going mad, you understand? Like, I've, I remember when I came back from DC, yeah? Recent America trip, yeah? I had scratches on my neck, yeah? My gal was like, yo, what you got scratch on your neck for? <laughs> thinking man's been doing the, you understand? Thinking, uh, thinking man's been doing the mad thing, blood. These times, it's just, it's people sharing man love, bro, and for me, it's mad, you understand? Because. I'm, I'm, I'm just some normal little, I'm, I'm just a normal guy from London, you get me? Just like everyone here, you understand? And what, what it's done for, man, it's just wild blood, you get me? Kalechi, you know, brother, it's okay for you to have side chick. No, it's okay to have side chick, my brother. My brother, Kalechi. Kalechi, I've Kalechi, I got to say, you're one of the most unique fans ever. Thank you very right? much. Right, like, I remember when I first met you, was it Wembley? Was it Wembley, no, the no, first? No, 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 Arsenal. Oh. Yeah, no, but uh, was it a, a, a game at Wembley? I think that's one of the first games I can remember. You gave me one of them beats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> one of the I said, <laughs> said to me, we And that's what made your channel to blow. <laughs> so we need some of the money. <laughs> My brother, I have to say the truth. <laughs> and, I, and I know that you are a mad, passionate Arsenal fan. And those days, 
This guy used to travel down for every home game from Leeds. He, he, he'd come and do his interview after the game, and he goes, guys, listen, I've got to rush back. I've got to get the last train to get back to Leeds. That's how much of an Arsenal fan he is. And you really do push the, the Nigerian culture as well, don't you? Of course, I'm a proud Nigerian, proud African. Big up to the Nigerian man, them. <laughs> and, well, <laughs> yes. Where's that DJ? You have to play Afrobeats today. You know, have fun. <laughs> yes, because we, we are in the Beyonce album, all Nigerians. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we push the culture. We like to, I um, mean, yeah, Arsenal is a class club um, with different cultures and uh, people. And we big support, to... big support for Arsenal in Africa. Of course. Huge. It's one of the things I've realised a lot since I've been doing AFTV. Exactly. So we have to, have to project that culture and I'm not ashamed of it. And part of being African as well is mostly being positive. That's why I like to be positive. Mm. Yes, of course, I've had some disagreements with um, a few of my people here. E.G. <laughs> Mr. D.T. <laughs> We've all argued with you, don't worry about Mr. that. Mr. Turkish. <laughs> but we're all cool. We're all cool. It's part of the... Yeah, you um, are with me now, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> can, can can you, can you, why are Arsenal so big in Africa? Well, Kanu is a big impact, isn't it? Kanu had that. From when Kanu was yeah, playing? Yeah, yeah, from when Kanu was playing. And a lot of people, you know, bought into it. And as I think I was signing African players. Signing Kolotori, signing different African players, Lauren, <laughs> Alexi won't be. And I have to mute that, you understand? Because I don't have a problem. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> you know, Uncle's probably watching. <laughs> yeah, you understand? Uncle is watching, you understand? I don't have a problem. Right. You understand? So, yeah, um, it's been massive. And I mean, I have to give a big shout out to AFTV because they've actually helped me grow my own brand as well. Um, obviously, you put now in the Coca Cola ad. My my yeah. my billboard is on Piccadilly Circus. When you pass, just say hi. <laughs> <laughs> We've walked with Budweiser. You wear the plug. I'll give it to you. Remember? Oh, <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> okay, uh, wait, wait, wait. So we have to talk about our achievement because it's AFTV that pushed us there. <laughs> Which other yeah. drinks? Other drinks are, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, listen. Let's get into uh, let's get into Claude and Ty. You got another mic for We got another mic there. We've got another mic we can give to Ty. Pass that mic along. Claude and Ty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. The voice of reason. The voice of treason. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. All right, go on. Carry on. I hardly even have to say anything to just these guys just start arguing. <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> they, I remember, I remember in particular when Arsene Wenger was here. The legend, you know, Arsene, yeah. Ty, I know that you, you, you were heartbroken when, when Arsene Wenger left because Absolutely. You, you were a massive fan of his. <laughs> yeah, know, I'm, I'm, a massive, know, I'm a massive fan of him and the club, but yeah. I'll always support whoever's in Claude, I know that you just felt that it was, his time was up. It's and, time to go! <laughs> here we go. And... To, Right. The, the, thing, the amazing thing about it is I'd see you guys have massive arguments, but you still More massive friends. on the coach. Yeah, we have big arguments on the coach. Uh, big, he's, he's a, he's Absolutely, a, so yeah. yeah so I won't say it's a, it's acquaintance. <laughs> <laughs> acquaintance? Spell acquaintance. One, one nil tight. You see what I mean? Just joking, thank you, Cole. Just joking, just joking. You see what I mean? But, but, no. Ty, Yo. one of the legendary videos <laughs> that feature you Here we go. was me and you at a game, uh, 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 outside the game. It's about one o'clock. It was in against, the yes, Robbie, it was who, against who Watford. Watford. What? Watford again? And we lost 2 1 when we Troy lost 2 1 to Watford. Unfortunately, I couldn't believe it. And you blame the rain. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think I, I, I think having, I knew, having said that, I think I knew this not the mind. only one. Who and I done it on Sunday with the sun. <laughs> I think I, I think that night, Robbie, I had new addition on my mind. You know, can you stand the rain? So maybe that's what I'll do with it. And I know, Great, so. and I know also, Ty, that you used to, after every single home game, you used yeah. to wait outside at the Emirates oh. for Arsene Wenger to Absolutely. come out, and oh, okay. he used Absolutely. to drive up and talk to you. Is that right? Absolutely. Yeah, it was amazing. It was fantastic to chat to him. I mean. No, he, unfortunately, he's, he's gone now, so. 
But yeah, no, it was it was amazing he's, because he was very very humble. He's waiting for Dick now, and yeah, very Emery. down to earth. Who's Dick Emery? <laughs> Who's Dick Emery? And why are you interrupting? Why are you interrupting? <laughs> Why are you? Why, why are you interrupting? Sorry, oh no, sorry, Robbie, sorry. Robbie sorry. mentioned my name, not yours. Sorry. So, sorry. Before, sorry, Robbie. Before, before I was rudely interrupted. Like I was saying, he was fantastic to chat to. Very, very humble. Very down to earth, and he would speak to you about anything. I mean, Whoa, there yeah. was others like Mike and some others who used to chat to before, but to chat to him was fantastic because he had no ego. He was brilliant to chat to, and he would really speak to you on a level. Claude, let, let me ask you, yeah? Yeah, go on. A lot of people say to me, they go, what is up with this guy? He's Negative. always angry. Always. He's always angry. He's always, mm. you know, even at the weekend, you had a right go at Unai Emery. You know, he's saying that, you, in your opinion, even after just four games, you're saying that it might be time for him to go. I mean... Uh, maybe it's because I'm a miserable bastard. But anyway... <laughs> um... Please don't swear, Claude. No, on excuse AFTV, no, please don't swear. Oh, hold on, sorry. No, um, sorry, go again, Rob. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> you forgot the question. See, he's so, he's so miserable, you forgot the question. I was saying, I was saying, there are some fans that say that, you know, you can be a bit hardcore. You really go in sometimes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm a realist. I'm a realist. I uh, see the real picture in front of me. I said it in May, he should have gone. Um... People said, uh, give him another free, uh, free year. He got a free pass. I only give free passes to people over 60. Um, <laughs> one, but, one, one, one. Um, for me, I think the embarrassment of losing that final was enough for me. But I thought I'd give him another chance. But now five games in, we're blaming the sun and everything else. He it's might, blame, early, the, he might blame the Daily Mirror tomorrow. Claude, it's still early. <laughs> exactly. It's still early in the season. Yeah, come on, no. It's, you see you see things, Rob, and I'm afraid. If I'm wrong, Rob, at the end of the season, I'll give 300 quid to Unai's charity, Unai Emery's charity, yeah. <laughs> 300 pounds to Unai Emery's charity. So what's that, if we get choice, in the top four? If we get in the top four, here we go. Okay, he's okay. Good. we got that on camera. <laughs> All right, you know, you know what I'd like to do now? I'd like to uh, get a couple of questions from the audience for these guys up here. Is, is there anybody in the audience who'd like to ask anyone here on the panel um, a question? There we got someone there. That's Sonny there. Question, question for Ty. Um, You're right, Sonny. Uh, hello, bro. You're right. All right. Uh, how many layers have you got on today? <laughs> <laughs> layers? Uh, what have I got? Vest, T-shirt, and shirt. That's it. Tie on that. Tie on that, right? Because yeah. people ask me this all the time. Yeah. Thanks for the question, by right. the way, Sonny. People ask me that all the time. They say, yeah. why is it that this guy's always wearing the club shop? I wish I was wearing He's got Arsenal headphones. He's got, how, much, how much Arsenal gear do you wear on a match day? Well, let's see. So it's Arsenal hat, Arsenal wristbands, Arsenal vest, Arsenal t-shirt, Arsenal boxers, thank you, troop. <laughs> Arsenal Bermuda shorts, Arsenal socks, Arsenal trainers, <sighs> uh, Arsenal, head, Arsenal headphones, Arsenal, Arsenal oyster card holder. And Ars Arsenal bag, Arsenal water bottle, yeah, yeah. Uh, Arsenal bag, Arsenal water bottle, Arsenal, Arsenal, Arsenal socks as well. The glasses, the frame is broken. Yeah, the, Long John's, yeah, they're like, they're like the, mood as well. Yeah. The, 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 words, Arsenal so replica shirt, yeah. When you go to the shop, did they give you a discount? No, I wish they did. Oh, come in on, other words, <laughs> come In on, other words, is the Arsenal shop dumb, dummy. Uh, <laughs> is that meant to be funny? Claude is trying to make a joke. Let's, uh, let's have another question from the audience. <laughs> This is working. There we go. There we go. <laughs> it turned you off. There we go. This one's for Robbie. What next for AFTV FC? And uh, when are we going on tour? <laughs> that's, that's Kieran. That's Kieran. What are the captains for AFTV FC of FC? Of course, we Kieran. we got the football team. Uh, we do the Blood Brothers series. I'm going to talk a little bit about that later on. Uh, maybe you never know, a tour might be coming up soon. Just chill, man. <laughs> <laughs> if you're selected. Robbie! on the spot. Robbie! All right, let's get... Let's... <laughs> Let's get, let's get another question from the audience. Broads. 
Uh, yes, myself, Broads. Um, Peace, Broads. Dubby's only. Obviously, I represent the AFTV, FC kind of things. But um, as a fan of the channel in general, I just wanted to know, like, how has your life changed? Like, to anybody who wants to answer that. Let's, let's get uh, DT to answer that one. Um, I'd kind of echo what Troops was saying earlier on in terms of the background that we come from, the path that we kind of go in. I've got friends that are either in prison or they're dead. Um, there's a lot of gang violence and trouble where I'm from. I was going down the same route, spent my time in prison and turned my life around. And a lot of that is to do with my children as well. Um, but then obviously Robbie came along, AFTV, and it's just kind of propelled my life to a different level. Going to countries that I can't even spell. Um, we're all getting on a plane tomorrow to go to Germany for the game at Frankfurt and stuff. So yeah, completely changed my life around. And you know, I still find it weird when we go to games and you're getting stopped and pictures, autographs, and you have children coming up and saying that you're their role model and stuff. It's like, it's surreal to be honest that just doing this, giving your opinion, being a fan can change your life that way. But for me, it's massively changed my life. And yeah, long may it continue, man. Brilliant, can we get another question? Hey, what's Got going on? Got another question there? Yo, what's going on, what's going on, uncle? How you doing? How you doing, man? Yo. That's yeah. Daryl. I was with you from the beginning, man. You've inspired all of us. Just wanted to say that. But my question is to Claude. If Unai Emery was to go, who would you like to come in to replace him? <laughs> Me and so, <yeah>. Ty. <laughs> <laughs> seriously. No, seriously. No, no, seriously. Oh, um, sure. My man, Allegri. My, my Italian friend, Allegri. No better. Let, let me let me ask let me um ask some of the other guys um up here. Let me ask Chris this, yeah. Um to get a mic to Chris. Claude saying at this early stage that Unai Emery should I mean, do you agree with that? I mean he's had, he hasn't he had, he's had one season, didn't really have really many of his players. And then now, all right, he's had players coming, but he's five games in. I mean But it's not five games, Rob. He goes Thank back you, Chris. to last season. He goes back to last season. It, it, it goes back to it goes back to last it goes it goes back to last season. Evening champ. And it's interesting that Watford got rid of a manager. Basically, the form that Watford showed towards the end of last season, they got humiliated in the cup final, and then the first five fixtures of this season, we got humiliated in the cup final. I'm not seeing any improvement in the team whatsoever. I don't like quoting uh, Adrian Durham, but Unai Emery, quoting uh, Adrian Durham, but Unai Emery, Unai Wenger. <laughs> no, but I mean, it's, Troops, it's, it's not funny, mate. Yeah. Troops, where do you stand on it? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Where great you, mount, where, great where do, minds think alike. Where do, you, where do you stand on it, troops? Pass the mic there. Get, let, let, get troops in. Where, where do you stand on it? Unai Emery, under pressure already, five games in. You know my view. I'm Emery in blood. You understand? Like, boo your blood clot, blood. <laughs> yeah? Boo your bumba clot, Why? blood. Because the defence is not right at the moment. You understand? There's a lot to come in. You get me? Like, Pepe's just come. He needs to settle. This is his first full season, like, you understand? He had one season, you get me? He got to a cup final. Fair enough, we fucked it up. But you learn from your mistakes. I think we have a top four squad now. I think last year we didn't. I think this year we do. I think the man them, I don't know, bro. I think you man need pum pum. <laughs> Seriously, blood, because like, I'm being real, bro. Like, how can you, how can like, Let's be real now, innit? Like, the amount of shit Wenger put, put us through, yeah? And we were just sitting there, and you have to look at Liverpool blood, yeah? Klopp never fixed it first time. When Klopp's first season, what happened? He got embarrassed in a cup final, same as Emery. Europa, Europa League. And who embarrassed him? It was Emery that embarrassed him. Let's not forget that, yeah? You understand? And you got man jumping out their prams for what, blood? For what, what fam? About, what about you, Kalichi? What about you on it? 
brother, I don't know. I can, I can see reasons why they said he sh they are saying he should go, but actually one already. I can see reasons why. I can see reasons, but I don't want him to go. I want him to stay and uh, turn things around because there's no structure. If you tell me what we are playing, sometimes I don't know who is playing what wing. I'm asking my neighbor, uh, where is he playing? <laughs> and I don't even know if the goalkeeper is there. Do you understand? Everything is just like, what do you call um, Ranieri again? What's his name again? Oh. Tinker man. Tinkerman. He looks Ranieri. like a tinker man yeah. at the moment. So he needs to sort himself out. You know, you look at the midfield, there's no strength. That could then we're just cutting us like butter. You understand? Just run, free man on go. And then you're thinking, okay, so manager, what are you doing? We've not seen anything yet. We know he, he has the capacity to turn it around. He has bought players. We need to give him time to, you know, blood those players. And he has been backed heavily in the, final, in the market. So if people are calling for his head after he's been backed, you can understand why they are calling for his head. But I'm not calling for his head. You know, I'm, I don't like people losing their job like that. You understand? Okay, you, you know what? Let me, let me ask you this time. There's been a lot of people Thank suggesting, you. and I think it was a Heavy D you I saw at the background shouting out. Yeah, Heavy D. Right? <laughs> <laughs> heavy D shouted out. Heavy D, yeah. Jose Mourinho. Would you, have, would, you, would you have Jose Mourinho as Arsenal's manager? Of course. Well, of course. Of course not. Never, ever, 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 ever. What's that song by Taylor Swift? Never, ever, ever getting back together. <laughs> Never, ever, ever, Jose Mourinho. All right, let, let, let me, Lee. The winner, the winner. Jose Mourinho, would you have him as a manager? Would you have him? Arsenal, Arsenal Football Club is about class. Yeah. Right. Uh, that's, what it, that's what it represents. So as far as I'm concerned, Jose Mourinho hasn't got the class to manage Arsenal Football Club. And that's, that's why... But listen, you can say that he's a winner and that, but um, you are, you are, Emery's a winner because he's won trophies. So, um, you know, Allegri's won trophies. There's a way to win trophies and there's a way not to win trophies. And as much as um, I want us to win trophies, I would like us to win trophies in the proper way, the Arsenal way, and not the Mourinho way. OK. We've got time for some more questions. Let's go. We've got another hand up there. We've got Tade there at the front there. Uh, yeah, this question is for Robbie. Yeah. Um, obviously, you you kind of interview all fans, you know, after the games, and um, sometimes you know you have to be diplomatic because you're a presenter and all that. But at times you get sucked in into arguments with most of us. I've had my, my arguments with you in the past, and with other people. Mm, yeah. Who do you yeah. think has given you the most headache among most of the fans? <laughs> like, who do you think on a on a on a scale of zero to you know zero to ten, who do you usually have um, different views? <laughs> Why are you the most head of Hello. I, I think, I yo, think that's yo. quite easy to answer. And he's sitting right there. He's got a load of tattoos on him. Yo, yo. Like that guy there, DT, he gives you a lot yo, of headache. Yo, yo. A lot of headache, you know. Right. Um, but I like him. I like him because he, he's, uh, he's a very controversial character. He's very, he, he has his own opinions. Very strong opinions. He doesn't listen. But he does listen eventually. Right? <laughs> um... But, yeah, when, usually when it's gone crazy. But, um, yeah, he, he gives me the most problems without a doubt. Yeah, <laughs> but, um, no, listen, I, I, but I, I enjoy interviewing all the fans. You know, you know what I like about it is that everybody's different. Everybody's different, you know what I mean? And you get so many differing opinions you know, after games. And that's, that's kind of, you know, for me, that's why the reason I started it. Because I, uh, just like what I think it was Lee or Chris was saying earlier on, that back in the day, I just remembered, you know, you go down the pub after a game and you could ask five different people, who was your man of the match? And you get five different answers, you know? And you still get that, you know what I mean? You say to somebody, somebody will give somebody an eight out of 10, and then you turn around to somebody else and they say, him, he was rubbish. I gave him two out of 10. So I love the opinions of fans. And I think that's one of the things that, that makes AFTV. That's one of the things that makes football. So it, it's amazing. But um, listen, I'm going to thank all the guys that are uh, come up onto stage. Turkish? We're going to get a quick question in from Turkish. 
Yeah, obviously, you might as well bring some controversy to the thing. So, um, obviously, look, we're talking He's about... another controversial figure, by the way, Turkish. We're talking about Emery, yeah? <laughs> yeah. But I want to talk about some players. We've brought in a lot of young talent recently. We've got a lot of young talent at the squad, but it's the experienced players letting us down. When you look at Xhaka, you look at Ozil, that, that, that's two players there that are, are key to that. They're not good so enough right team. now. Um, Socrates and Louise, I won't mention them right now because they are not experienced at the club. Xhaka and Ozil have been at the club three plus years. Socrates and Louise are pretty new to the club. So when you look at them players there, do they need replacing now? Or is it really Unai Emery that's the problem? And I want to ask every single one there. No, I don't think we're going to get time to get every single one in. But Let, let me, me ask DT then. Let me, yeah. And Chris, DT and Chris. <sighs> I knew I'd get this Quick question. Um, we can't replace them right now because the window's shut. So we've got to work with what we've got. At the moment, it's not working with Unai Emery. I back him until the end of the season because I believe if he gets us into the Champions League, he's done his job. He's um, reached his target. Um, but I need to see some kind of progression. I need to see a team okay. that has, you know what I mean? But right now, we've got to stick with those players and they've got to help us get through. You stick with those players, Chris? Um, no, I wouldn't. Just a no. <laughs> oh, sorry. Is that no good enough? And on Amory, on Amory, I look back to Wenger's last, first season of Wenger and the first season of Jules Graham. Uh, at the end of the first season, I saw progression. Under Emery, I'm seeing nothing. And I'm very, very scared. OK, well, listen, I, I want to thank these guys here who've come up on stage to do the um, Q&A. Thank you to Chris Hudson, to DT, Lee Judges, Troops, Kelechi and the dynamic duo, Ty and Claude. Give it up! Thank you. Hi, and welcome along to the All Guns Blazing podcast with my man DT. All right, Robbie. Cold. Cold. It's so warm having my glass of wine, you forced me to be outside. <laughs> I'd love to give you for that. No, I don't want Unai Emery fired. That would be ridiculous. It's four games into the season. Let him finish out his contract at least. This is our problem, I think, you know, um, at the moment with the team. Graham, we're back again. Back again? I told you not to do that. Good evening, good evening. Yeah, I think uh, we are progressing. I think I am very happy with, with the team, with the player, and, and, and also with, with every supporter, Arsenal supporter. Be clear, the coach, the manager, the board will be fully aware of everything that you're saying on social media, everything you're saying on this channel, and they'll be aware of the fans' discontent through booing. I didn't like the players he was buying. I thought he was buying second-tier players and then he was selling our best players to rivals. Order! Behave yourself, Robbie. <laughs> you are at Arsenal Football Club. <laughs> <laughs> so very excited to play for the next season, uh, but uh, we have to think only about us. Uh, we need to prepare well uh, next season. <sighs> Crazy! Uh, obviously, we had the European Championship. Um, we won. Hi guys, um, I'm Matita, and I'm a partner manager at YouTube, and I manage AFTV's channel. I just want to say on behalf of YouTube, congratulations for this incredible milestone of hitting 1 million subscribers. It's so great to see your exponential growth over the years, as well as the amount of respect that you've also gained along the way. You guys have genuinely paved the way for other channels that focusing on sports, but you've also given fans a voice. 
on a global platform. And that's just so inspiring. Um, and also they can just gain and learn so much from that. And regardless of the channels that they, or the, the, the teams they support. So once again, just congratulations for this incredible achievement. I think Arsenal can take a leaf from your book and hopefully bring back a, a, a trophy this season. Congratulations um, once again. Thank you very much, Matita. And you know what? Thank you, genuinely. She's really helped us a lot. Um, it's nice. I want to I wanna get some of our guys that have um, helped to make this possible uh, up on stage, because it's not a one-man thing, right? There's uh, a lot of work that goes... Huh? <laughs> yeah, Philippa, Philippa's here. We know Philippa's here. So, let me get some of the team up. Um, Tao, Brennan, Bav, Laurie, Loomis. Also, also, Philip, I do want to get you up on here. Philip, I jump up. Anita as well is here. Anita, are you still here? Oh, she's right here at the front. Anita, jump up, man. You've been part of this as well, doing pre presenting as well. Um, <laughs> and, um, it's been a massive achievement, so you guys hold it as well. It's been brilliant. Some pictures there. Without, without. <laughs> like Matita said, I hope Arsenal are doing that at the end of the season, right? You know what? Um, let me just uh, thank some people, genuinely, right? Um, as I said, all these guys up here, right? Without these guys, it's not possible. You know, they put so much work in right from day one. You know what I mean? They work their socks off to bring content. I can't tell you how many games... When we go to a game, for instance, like the game against Watford, we'll be there like two, three hours before the game. When the game finishes, you know, that game... What, what time that game finish? That finish like half, quarter to seven. We're getting them like... Midnight, one o'clock, you know, later sometimes. If it's an away game, like midweek games and that, ridiculous times we get home. I remember when we started this for about the first three years, we were all working full-time jobs as well. It was really tough, but these guys, they've stuck with it. They've worked really hard, and they're the reason why we've got this plaque today of one million subscribers, something that was just a dream at the start of it. When people say that a million subscribers, that just seemed like a, like a million miles away. So, you know, it's, it's an incredible achievement and it's down. I want you to give a big round of applause to these guys. I want to I wanna thank also, as I said, everybody here at YouTube who's uh, made this night possible. All the fans that we've interviewed um, over the years, and I'm not just talking about the guys that are up here, there's lots of fans in this room that we've interviewed on a regular basis. Turkish, who's been a great fan, who who's also does a great show as well. Sunny, Heavy D, Dave, you know what I mean? Johnny, Curtis, I can see lots of you out there. You know what I mean? I'm so grateful for the fact that you guys come on on a regular basis and you help to, to make um, this channel what it is. Uh, I want to thank the guys at UFF, Brett, Ross, Randir, all those guys. You know, you've been brilliant as well. Um, Fantastic over the years. Be, uh, I see Daniel Levine's in here tonight. Again, another guy that's um, been great, really helped us a lot right from the start of uh, the journey. Um, I want to thank, uh, I see Francesca's here. Big up, Cheska. Big up, Vanessa. We've. I've I, I got to say, right, um, it's been an amazing journey, as I said, you know, I mean, as well as you know, what you see with AFTV, we're doing so much more now, you know what I mean? We do so many more programs. We've got a award-winning podcast on AFTV. We've got um, the number one preview and review show for Premier League football on AFTV. You know, we've got a TV production company that's done free productions already on Channel 4, the Real Football Fan Show. 
And all of that has come through this, has come through this, right? And you know what, we're just getting started. There's, we've got so many other big projects in mind going forward. There's the Blood Brothers project that we've been doing. Yeah. We're dealing with the guys from UFF. We've got the Blood Brothers team. Uh, series one took the internet by storm. Series two is about to drop and it's gonna be epic. AFT, VFC, all those guys in the team have worked so, so hard, right? Again, training, you know, with little rewards. They've been training right throughout, right? When there's no cameras on them and I really appreciate what they've done and they really put in a great effort. And don't worry, tours and that are coming abroad. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, right? Um, but the Blood Brothers series, look out for that. Series two coming very, very soon. Also, with the TV stuff, we still continue to do that. We're currently working on a, a documentary that's um, going to be coming on ITV. Look out for that. That'll probably be out next year, but that's definitely coming. And uh, again, thanks to the guys who, who uh, help us to do that on the production side. The other thing that we really want to do in the future as well is really bring together a lot of the channels that are out there. One of the things that we're really proud of is that we feel like we started like a movement, you know, of football fan channels, right? And as well as us and... Listen, every one of these channels and every one of these teams are our enemies, you know? We still don't like Man United. We still don't like Tottenham. But we... <laughs> but we are, we are, we are a football fan community, right? And I respect these other channels. I respect these channels like United Stan, West Ham Fan TV, Red Men TV. Um, all these channels have been really been putting it in for a long time, you know? And what I'd really like to do in the future is, you know, because I, I feel it's our duty here on AFTV to give something back as well. You know, we've got to share what we've learned over these years and help to empower other people to be able to set up channels. So if you want to do a channel for your club, we want to be able to help you to do that. You know what I mean? Because we want to, you know, we, we want to start like a global fan network. It'd be cool for me to see every Premier League team have a version of AFTV. You know, even Spurs. <laughs> even Spurs, right? I have somebody to argue with, <laughs> right? To see, you know, in the championship, League One, League Two, in La Liga, you know, and that is our next big plan. We really want to empower fans to be able to start up fan channels of their own teams. And it's not, you know, the, listen, football is very tribal. And as I said, right, you know what I mean? It will always be tribal. But as fans, we are a community, right? And we come together as a community until match day. And it all changes. And that's all good. So we want to really start thinking about how we can do this global fan network. If there's anybody out there watching on YouTube and you're interested, right, get in contact with us. Um, I think we've got um, an email address, footballfantv at gmail.com. It's footballfantv at gmail.com. Get involved with that if you're interested. And you never know, you guys could be the next ones up here on stage, you know, inviting us to your one million party. You know, I, I love to see the growth of some of these fan channels. I mean, I'm looking at the growth at the moment of, say, a United stand. I know Flix is in, in here at the moment, and their growth is incredible. They're doing a great job. Um, better than their team, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I just, I just want to see fans of all football clubs, you know, get a voice, just like we've been able to do with Arsenal fans. So... That's one of the things I, I'd love to be able to see us do in the future. One of the things we are going to do in the future. And the other thing I'd like to say as well, if anybody out there is watching, right, if you want to start something, especially here on YouTube, one of the great things about YouTube is that it's accessible to anybody, right? And, yeah, you start small. We started small. We started, right, like Drake said, from the bottom, now we're right? Now we're here. Now we're right here. We started from the bottom and you can build something. You really can.
If you believe you really can build something, I think we are living proof of that. And as I said, we are only just getting started. Believe you. Believe me when I say that. Plans, big plans ahead. So, I think we come to the end of the, the live stream. I hope you guys, uh, guys have enjoyed it. Everybody who's been watching out there around the world. Everybody who's been here tonight at the, uh, the YouTube space. Um, we've really enjoyed it. Uh, like DT said earlier, we're going to be jumping on a plane in the morning off to Frankfurt. Uh, waking up about four in the morning to, to get to Stansted Airport to get on that flight. Um, and the journey continues, and the journey continues for Arsenal as well. Let's hope we can go out there and get a win. But truly, I want to thank everybody in this room and every fan, whether you be an Arsenal fan or you're a fan of any football club, thanks for the love over the years, and thanks for one million subscribers. Yeah.